Hello, welcome. Today we have a lot of news, and the scene is so bustling that I can't even bring all the videos to you. But let's focus on the most important news, starting with Switch emulation. We'll discuss Nozomi, a new emulator based on Yuzu but without the complications of the curse code. Then, we'll talk about Torzu, which will now limit public development and stop publishing pre-compiled builds. Lastly, we'll cover the progress Vita 3K has made in its version 12, along with some tests. Let's begin with Nozomi. Before diving into more details, if you're not familiar with all the issues surrounding Yuzu, I'll leave a video in the card and description that explains some of that. So, what exactly is the Nozomi project? In the past, when developers left the Suyu project in mass, they stated they couldn't continue with it or any derived projects because Yuzu initially used a Nintendo Switch development kit obtained illegally. This made Yuzu's and its derivatives code radioactive and cursed. This is one of the major reasons why developers abandon projects like Suyu, as there's always the possibility of legal action from Nintendo against these emulators. Nozomi is an early stage project aiming to eliminate these dependencies, avoiding future lawsuits and bringing legality to these projects. Thus, Nozomi emerged as a high-level emulator still in development. Currently, it doesn't run any games or homebrew, and there's nothing available to test yet. Apparently, development will be slower compared to other projects, with most modifications made about 9 months ago. This indicates that the developers behind the project are still not fully active, despite minor updates about 2 weeks ago. Despite having nothing to showcase yet, the future of Nozomi could be very promising, and it's worth keeping an eye out in case they release a build in the future. Now, let's talk about Torzu, the user developed in the deep web. The developer updated their GitHub page, explaining that making the project public took away all their free time and enjoyment. They mentioned that people who don't lead a project don't understand how stressful it is to maintain a large project under public scrutiny. From personal experience, even with a small channel, I understand the pressure when something I post doesn't please you all. The developer mentioned that the project started as a hobby but now feels obligated to keep it constantly updated to meet public expectations, which is overwhelming. Additionally, they're disheartened because Windows Defender has flagged the project as malware, further demotivating them. They appreciate everyone who reported bugs but stated that dealing with these reports has diverted them from taking the project in the direction they would like. For all these reasons, they've decided to limit the public development of the project. However, he explained his future plans. He already has a blog where he publishes a separate repository and will keep this repository updated enough to compile builds for both Linux and Windows. However, new updates will be private and no new public builds will be released. In the GitHub repository, it will still be possible to compile new versions, but the developer won't offer support for now. In the end, he thanks everyone who supported the project in any way, even if it was just by reporting bugs. Lastly, let's talk about the best PlayStation Vita emulator, Vita 3K. Recently, the project has seen significant improvements in both the Windows and Android versions. All the gameplay footage in the background was captured on Android. Let's discuss these improvements. Starting with Android, it's now possible to choose the folder where data is saved, including memory cards, USB drives, and any type of storage connected to the device at the time. I tested this functionality, and it works very well. A bug was fixed that prevented the performance overlay from appearing along with touchscreen controls. An aspect ratio issue that caused some devices to display black bars at the top and bottom of the screen has been fixed. Finally, the bug that made installing new games on Android 10 times slower has been fixed. I struggled a lot with this in past videos, but now installation is really fast. An issue with the accelerometer and gyroscope has been fixed. There have been improvements in some crashes and in the emulator's overall quality of life. An option to adjust the opacity of on-screen controls has been added. In the Windows version, the following changes were made. An audio regression was fixed. Code cleanup, refactoring, and minor optimizations were performed. The way error messages are displayed to the user has been improved. Improvements have been made to the graphical interface. A feature that helped fix issues with the Ratchet and Clank series of games has been improved. Support for unloading and reloading modules was added, which allowed Final Fantasy X to move to a playable state. Dependency on FFmpeg has been improved. Transfer copy reduction and graphical issues in Fantasy Star Nova have been fixed. Improvements have been made in Polish language support. I haven't tested the Windows version yet, only Dead or Alive 5 Plus, and the results were quite satisfactory. I didn't notice any compatibility or performance issues. 
On Android, I tested several games and to my surprise, I can play them at native 1080p on my ROG Phone 6 with 8GB of RAM. Despite the project already having custom video drivers, I found this feature to be quite problematic as it broke most of my games running on Vulkan. The solution I found was to use only the native device driver, without any updated Turnip or Adreno drivers. Of all the compatible games I tested, the only one that didn't work was Dead or Alive 5. Here's a brief rundown of my experience with each game. Street Fighter Cross Tekken works very well, although using Vulcan makes projectiles and some effects invisible. The game is playable, but if you use OpenGL, all effects are rendered correctly. Mortal Kombat 9 ran very well, only the text font in the game looked a bit strange, but it was readable. God of War 2 performs great and can be an alternative for those who can't run the game on Nether SX2. The game runs smoothly at 30 FPS, but it's possible to unlock 60 FPS. I had an issue where all cutscenes were slow and played without sound, regardless of the API or settings used. I'm unsure if this is specific to my device. Uncharted Golden Abyss had fewer graphical issues now. There were reports that saving the game wasn't possible, but I managed to save and load normally. JSTAR's Victory Versus runs perfectly without any graphical issues. I found the performance of the application to be very good, but I noticed that some games that install on the Windows version simply won't install on the Android version, showing errors related to work.bin or Zrif, even when everything is set up correctly. I'm not sure if this issue will occur on other devices or if it was specific to the USB drive where I was installing my games. If you're interested, I can create a new compatibility list for Vita 3K. And that wraps up the video folks. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like to help promote my work and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.